Okay, so now you're familiar with conventional guitar tapping. I want to take you back、uh, to when I was about 17 years old, and、uh, I was all into electric guitar, doing the whole Eddie Van Halen thing. And I'm going to tell you how exactly I got into fingerstyle through tapping, and actually a happy accident, which will lead us to what we're going to look at in this section. When I was playing with my Les Paul, I was living at home, you know, age 16. Seventeen, and my mum put my guitar down onto my guitar stand, but unfortunately, it didn't have the sort of clasp on to keep it in place, and it fell down, and the headstock snapped off, which was great. Thanks, mum. But、um, what ended up happening was the Les Paul had to be glued back together at this neck joint. So we had it horizontal on the dining room table, okay, and it had to stay like that. I couldn't pick it up, I couldn't move it because it had to set. All right, now. Which sixteen, seventeen-year-old guitar player would not be able to play his guitar? I can't think of one. I was obsessed with guitar. I wanted to play it, so I went up to the guitar like this that was propped up on the dining room table. Keep in mind, this was an Epiphone Les Paul guitar with a very low action, and that was the first time I put my guitar into Dadgad tuning, the tuning which we've been looking at through most of this、uh, this tuition series. And what I realised was in this tuning. I was able to view the guitar from above, rather than viewing it in sort of box shapes and, and, and scale shapes that we're used to in a conventional guitar position. I was able to view the fretboard from above, and what I saw, instead of conventional shapes, was first of all a reset button on my Universe because we were in a different tuning. But I was able to look at the guitar as six individual pianos. What I mean by that is each string I was viewing chromatically from above. Every single note, just like a piano, and it kind of made sense to me at the time. And this tuning facilitated、um, a lot of、uh, what I wanted to do on a piano keyboard when I was younger. In fact, keyboard was my first instrument. Now, when I was playing keyboard at school, I was always taught to play the chords in this hand, in the left hand, and a melodic accompaniment in the right hand. So, what I started to do was figure out those chords in the left hand. So, I would go to say the fifth fret, and I found out that I could tap. My root, in this case, it's a G. Okay, fifth fret, bottom string. I was then able to tap the fifth, the Star Wars interval, the fifth. Okay, which is a D in this case. Okay.、Uh, what else do I need to create? Say a major chord. We have the root. We have the fifth. The the major third is what I needed. So I was able to reach over with the third finger to the G string, fret four in this case. And I was able to imply or create this this major chord just through tapping the notes from above. Okay. Now this felt very very strange at first. My muscles were not used to moving in this way. But it turns out that learning guitar like this or recalibrating what I had learnt in this kind of way was invaluable to me when I started progressing to acoustic guitar and started playing upright using a lot of these two-handed tapping techniques. So what I'd like you to do is to lay your guitar flat, just like this. Okay, put it in dadgad tuning if you're not already in dadgad tuning, which you should be, and and play horizontally like this. Rest your thumb, as I am doing here, on the edge. Remember, whenever we tap, we want to have our thumb as that anchor point. The same is true of this hand. So my thumb is resting on the edge of the fingerboard still, even though we're flat. I'm hammering on fret five. I'm hammering on fret five, just on the A string, and then ignoring the D string. And then tapping the G string as well. Okay. Now you might recognise this shape as very similar to one of the movable shapes we looked at. This was actually my introduction to that shape. This was how I discovered it, because of this lap style tapping that I kind of came across. Very much also、uh, similar to that style of、uh, Eric Mongrain, who I believe has also done a jam play series much like this. Good friend, great guitarist in Canada. Do check out his stuff. Okay. So anyway, once I had the major chords, I was able to make them minor, very simply by flattening that third. This time I had to use my pinky, which was a real painful、uh, movement to begin with, because you know, no matter how much you practice, the pinky is always going to be your weakest finger. That's why a lot of shred guitar players will rather stretch with their third finger than use their pinky if possible.、Um, I actually attended a Guthrie Govan、uh, workshop back when I was about、uh, 19 years old, and he said the exact same thing. Okay. But once I did this, I realised I could create these nice chord sequences in the left hand, and I could use this hand to create that melody that I wanted. Starting with a type of harmonic, which、uh, we did not discuss in the、uh, previous harmonic section, but something that you can achieve 
when the guitar is flat, something like this. Ninja chop harmonics? I don't know. I don't know how you'd want to, to, uh, to classify these, but what I'm essentially doing is using the edge of my index finger to slap the point of which the harmonic is generated. Here's 19, here's 12, 7, 5, wherever you like. If you, if you chop it like that, you can actually get a really, really bell-like sound, a much more aggressive harmonic attack with a brighter front end, okay? So I started messing around like that, creating these nice little passages, just experimenting with arpeggiating these chords in the left hand and slapping these harmonics with the right hand. And then before long, I wrote my first little lap tapping style piece of music. And, 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 and what I did was played this to a friend, uh, not knowing if it was any good or not. And he said, dude, come to a, an open mic night and play that for people. Uh, and although I wasn't very confident, I was still a band guy at that point, uh, a local rock band uh, called Shrapnel, back in my hometown. But I went out and did these open mic nights playing this style. And um, I sold a little homemade demo CD to these lovely audiences at local bars for about a year, gradually saved enough money to buy my first acoustic guitar. And, um, and then I uh, was able to play normally, taking the knowledge that I'd gained from writing in this style and applying it to future compositions. Okay, so I think it's a very, it was, a, it was an invaluable process for me and I want to share it with you. So now we're gonna look at two lap tapping or lap style tapping exercises. The first of which is the first song from my first song, a song called Still. Uh, which I believe is available on a very, very rare and out-of-print early EP I did. Um, and then we're going to look at this untitled riff, um, which is a little bit more complicated, okay? So let's take a look at the first riff from Still. This will get you used to arpeggiating in this hand and also tapping a melody in this hand, viewing the fretboard vertically, uh, not just in, in shapes, okay? So here we go. Let's take a look at this, this riff. <laughs> 